Tonight, it's the Braves against the Phillies from Atlanta. Good evening, everybody. Along with Pete Van Weer, and this is Ernie Johnson speaking to you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, where tonight we open up a four-game set with the Philadelphia Phillies. Tonight, tomorrow night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon, and all games will be on Braves TV. Then it's the All-Star break. The All-Star game is in Minneapolis on Tuesday, July 16th. It'll be televised nationally. You have the pitchers for tonight's game, Professor? It'll be John Denny, the former Cy Young Award winner for the Phillies. He's off to a so-so first half this year, a record of 5-7. Five and seven. Zane Smith pitches for Atlanta. His record are dead even at 5-5. Five and five. And both these teams, the Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies, trying to get something going. They're both kind of buried right now, each team in fifth place in their respective division. And we'll be back with all the action right after this message. Some of the Braves are warming up off to the right. The meeting taking place at home plate. And Pete has the starting lineups. Thank you, Ernie. For the visiting Philadelphia Phillies, Juan Samuel will lead it off and play second base. Newcomer Rick Shu, who's played very well for the Phillies, batting second at third. Vaughn Hayes hits number three in center field. Glenn Wilson, one of the top RBI men in the league, is the cleanup hitter in right field. Mike Schmidt at his new position of first base, bats fifth. Ozzie Virgil, the catcher, will hit sixth. The lower third of the order has John Russell in left field. Steve Jeltz at shortstop. And John Denny doing the pitching. He has a record of 5-7. and seven. For Atlanta, Claudel Washington gets back in the starting lineup tonight. Leading off in right, Rafael Ramirez will follow at shortstop. Dale Murphy bats third and plays center. The cleanup hitter at first base, Bob Horner. Terry Harper bats number five in left field. The number six hitter at third is Ken Obergfell. And Paul Zavella bats seventh, plays second base. The eighth hitter, the catcher, Rick Cerrone. Zane Smith, tonight's pitcher. He has a record of 5-5. Five and five, An earned run average of 3.39. The umpires for tonight, Charlie Williams calling the balls and strikes around the bases. Randy Marsh at first, Billy Williams at second, and John McSherry over at third. As I mentioned at the outset of the broadcast, the Phillies and the Braves in very similar situations this season. Both teams expecting to have much better years than they have had. The Phillies right now are fifth in the National League East. They're 12 and a half games out of first, but a very comfortable margin ahead of sixth place Pittsburgh. Pirates are 22 games out. Braves in a similar situation in the West. They're 12 games behind San Diego in fifth place, but they're five games ahead of sixth place San Francisco. And both teams still feel that even though it's a little past the midway mark for both ball clubs, if they can put together any kind of a spurt, they might be able to get back in the divisional races. The Phillies have played a little bit better of late. They got off to a horrible start, but the last month or so, the Phillies have been playing much better baseball. For the Braves, it's been a season where they've really not hit any kind of consistent string of victories. They did win five in a row on the last road trip, but quickly reversed that when they got back home on this homestand. Now the Braves have won only one, and they have lost six. There's tonight's starting pitcher, Zane Smith. He'll be facing Juan Samuel, Rick Shu, and Von Hayes in the top half of the first. And to tell you all about it, once again, here's Ernie. Okay, Peter. Smith with a couple of more tosses. This afternoon, the Dodgers beat the Chicago Cubs 3-1. to one. And that put the Dodgers in pretty good shape. They are 46-36. and 36. They are even in the loss column with San Diego. They've each lost 36 games. And the Dodgers, with all their injuries and all the experts, so to speak, saying they could not win the West this year, or only a game out of first. Right now, beautiful weather in Atlanta, but the forecast says there might be a little rain later on tonight. Same two clubs tomorrow night and Saturday night. We've been playing a lot of Saturday afternoon games. It'll be Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. Well, a fellow coming to the plate right now, Juan Samuel, in a couple of years, might be one of the best players in the National League, in my opinion. He is really coming on strong. He's batting 264, has 31 RBIs, seven homers, but he's stolen 29 bases. But above that, he's picked up on his fielding. Last year, he had 22 errors at this time. Now he has 10. He's an infielder who's got some sock in that bat, and you got to be careful on it. First pitch high, 1-0. and 
That's off his glove, and Zavella might throw him out. He just does. Samuel can move, and he's thrown out by a stride. That is a 1-4-3 if you keep a scorecard because Smith hit it. This is Rick Shu. They brought him up from the minor league, so they moved Schmidt over to first base. They thought, well, Mike might want to close out his career as a first baseman, and let's give Shu a chance, and he's performed quite well, too. He has a five-game hitting streak, batting 268. He's only 23 years old. One ball and strike. As Pete mentioned, both teams in fifth place. But I think more of the experts figured, first to pitch foul away, figured that Atlanta would be right in the thick of it all year long and that Philadelphia was kind of in a rebuilding year and they might not challenge the Cubs in Montreal and New York. But they have a lot of new players and they more or less are rebuilding. Curveball. Down on strikes goes Shue. Looked like Smith took a little bit off this pitch, too. He went for the outside part of the plate, and Shue chased it. So of the two teams, the Braves are the more disappointing to, the, to their fans. This is Von Hayes. Takes low. The records are almost the same. Philadelphia is 37 and 45. The Braves are 35 and 47. Philadelphia 12 and a half out, and the Braves 12 out. Hayes is at safely at eight of his last nine. This is game 83 on the year. Foul away. Don Sutton won his ninth game today, beating Milwaukee 9-3. He wants to reach 300, and that puts him in Cooperstown. 2-1, just a little bit high. Hayes can run. He's stolen 12 bases. have been hit with injuries too. I believe Steve Carlton's still on the disabled list. And that is a, a story in itself because Carlton, I don't know, I can't remember the last time if he's ever been on a DL. Three and two. To the mound. Nice pitch. Sawed him off and threw him out. That's a one, two, three for the young lefty. Philadelphia fails to score top of the first. Atlanta coming to back. You can see the defensive positions for Philadelphia behind John Denny. Denny's a pitcher. He's not a thrower. got an idea and has a, a good change of speeds. He's five and seven this year. Came in with 101 major league wins, 84 losses. He's pitched in both leagues. His best year in the majors was with the Phillies in 83, won 19 ball games. Lost only six. He led the league. number of years were spent with St. Louis. Washington takes the strike. He's another ex-Cleveland Indian, too. Yeah. A lot of those around both leagues. You know, what happens in any organization, you can go around and pick out an outstanding oh, yeah. team just about from everybody, but those pitchers from Cleveland, Sutcliffe, Denny. There's a line on the right in front of Waddell starts it with a single arrive. Now Ramirez with a nine-game hitting streak. Murphy to follow. 
Washington with eight stolen bases. He's been caught three times. Nobody out of runner first. Curve ball outside, one and oh. Bobby Dews coaching first and Bobby Wine at third, as usual. And the 1 0. Hit in the right field, base hit. Washington makes the turn and will hold there. Wilson's pretty good arm came up throwing. So well, back to back singles and Ramirez is in safely now on 10 straight. He's really got that stroke down. The pitch is flying away and Ramirez will go right with it. Knocking it into right field. Washington showing respect for the throwing arm of Glenn Wilson. He took the turn at second. But then went back. Now Murphy. Fastball outside. This is Murphy's 578th consecutive game. And there's a swing and a miss. Montreal failed to score at top of the first. Cincinnati's now batting. They're playing at Cincinnati. Horner, the on deck hitter. Here's a 1 1. Hit slowly towards third. That is trouble. That is trouble. Joe and Denny couldn't make up their mind, and neither touched it. And it's an infield hit. A top roll at a third. And I'll tell you who's alert on this play, the shortstop Steve Jeltz, because after Denny and Shu crisscross, neither touching the ball, if Jeltz hadn't come over there to back up, Claudel might have kept right on going. The Braves with a great scoring opportunity here in the first. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Horner takes... Outside corner for a stop. The captain hit his 12th home run here last night. Tied the ball game, but the Montreal Expos won it next inning. Home run by Fitzgerald. Curve ball high. Right call on a slow curve. The Braves have beaten the Phillies four times this year out of four chances. One and two. Here it is. Just outside. What an eye. Well, and the fans, ooh, you know it was close. Washington's a third. Ramirez second. And Murphy at first. Two balls and two strikes with Harper on deck. And a 2-2. Two -two. Way outside in the dirt. Three and two. Virgil made a good play. No one warming in their bullpen. Three balls and two strikes. Here's a wind and here's a pitch. Swung on, missed, he struck him out. Horner down on strike. Pitch looked like it was away from him. Might have been a slider or a fastball. That's a good pitch by John Denny. Bob Horner doesn't strike out much. Only the 23rd time this year he's gone down on strikes. He threw him something off speed. And now it'll be Terry Harper with one out. Little meeting on the mound. Come on, 
Harper with one down, bases loaded. He's hitting 266, eight homers and 41 RBI. Batting 348 in his last 15 games. Here's a pitch. Fastball high, one and oh. Obert Fell is next. Murphy first, Ramirez second, Washington third. Three straight hits. And the two all. Three and all. Now he's really in a hole. Denny, who looks like a young Howard Hughes. Three all. Strike call, three and one. Harper in the driver's seat. He can be choosy. And he fouls it away. Boy, you gotta give Denny credit. That is not easy out there with the bases loaded in the count of three and oh. He's come back now to make it three two. He was behind on Horner too. the payoff pitch struck him out that was a fastball it was up well Denny showing us some major league pitching here first he struck out Bob Horner and he put that fastball up around the letters on Terry Harper in a 3-2 pitch that was after falling behind three and nothing and now it's going to take a two out hit from Ken Obergfell if the Braves are to score here in the first One and oh. Fast strike, one ball, one strike. And the one one. Another fastball missing, two and one. the pitch. Hit to first. He's going to be out of it as Schmidt makes the play. Credit to Denny, but the Braves fans unhappy with their hero. Bases loaded, nobody out. Can't score. We go to the second inning. a good year. Most of the RBIs and he has 59. Chief's in trouble. Put the uniform back on, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> I notice there are no kids out there tonight. <laughs> Scared them off. Chief Nakahoma. It is a little muggy tonight. One ball on strike. Wilson is third in the National League in RBI. Good foul out of play. And the one two. Foul again. One really unusual part about Wilson's season, you saw he had 59 RBIs right up among the league leaders. 46 of them have been at home. Mm. Likes that home cooking. That's to right, but foul. Mike Ryan coaches first, and very familiar old-timer Dave Bristol coaching at third. Club is managed by John Felski. That's foul. Just missed the bag.
He broke his bat on that foul ball. They got Wilson from Detroit. He came over in 84. He has to do a lot to make up for that trade because Willie Hernandez was part of it. You know what he's done with the Tigers. Well, if he keeps driving in 59 runs every half season, he'll be earning his keep. Yes, sir. He came over here with John Wackenfuss for Willie Hernandez and Dave Bergman in the spring of 84. Keeps fouling him off. Two balls and two strikes. With another one foul past Bristow. I'll bet everyone doesn't know starting lineups of both the American and National League and the pitchers, so we're going to give them to you for the All-Star Game on Tuesday in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Just got it today. Pitchers selected and those that will start because of the number of votes they received. The regulars, so to speak. Schmidt's on deck. Ozzy Virgil is the third batter in the city. 3-2. Zane Smith with the pitch. Got him. Fastball strikeout. And he dropped the bat. That's strikeout number two for Smith. Got a good fastball tonight. He's had a lot of swinging strikes on it. Just overpowered him with that one. He likes to ride it over that outside corner to right-hand the batter and have it go away and then once in a while jam him with it. Then he has a curveball. He's not a fancy Dan pitcher. About three pitches, fastball, curve, and slider. This is Schmidt. Mike Schmidt with 435 career homers. And sometimes it feels like he hit most of them right here. One of his favorite parks. And Johnny Bench. Couldn't wait to get to Atlanta. Two balls, no strikes. Three and oh. I think Mike Fitzgerald likes it here, too. <laughs> yes. Two homers here in this past series, and he didn't start the first game. Three oh. They let him go, and he drills it to left field. It's going to be off the wall. On a 3 out count, they said, go ahead and swing. And Schmidt hit the wall with it. For a moment, I thought he had another homer. These veteran hitters especially are dangerous when they get the green light on 3-0 pitches against young pitchers because in most cases, a young pitcher behind in the count's going to throw a fastball in that spot. And that would have been a home run on the old fence. But this one high off the wall. He's got his 16th double of the year. Marshall Mann is one hitter behind. Ozzy Virgil. Schmitz at second. Smiling. The pitch is low. One and oh. Marshall gets a hand. One oh. Marshall Mann's the voice of Atlanta. He's done a lot of PA work and does an exceptional job. Doesn't make any difference what sport it is. Not necessarily baseball. He does a good job in all of them. Worked the Omni for years. Amazing thing. He travels 40 miles back and forth. Griffin, Georgia. Marshall gets up about 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't know how he does it on three hours sleep, but he's been doing it for years. You know, in that 19-inning game, he had to leave in the bottom half of the 18th to make it to work on time. To go to work. We left here at 4 o'clock. I was wondering. Kevin Barnes took over. That's right. Three and one. No score, second inning. Braves had a great chance, but flubbed it in the bottom of the first. Bases loaded. Nobody out. 
Ball four. First and second for John Russell. They expected a little more out of Russell. He's batting 192, two homers and six RBI. And I think they sent him back to the minor leagues for a spell and then brought him back. They tried to play him at first base, and he's a natural outfielder. He's strong. He sets some good stats in the minors. What a swing. Andy Owen. Outside corner. 1983 at Portland, Russell hit 27 homers. So he can take you deep. First and second, one up. And an 0-2. Just inside, I guess. And a 1-2. Two. High. 2-2. Two two. The Braves are 2-0 oh here and 2-0 oh in Philadelphia against the Phil. We have a four-game series here. After the All-Star break, our first road trip, Philadelphia is one of the towns we visit for four games. 2-2. Two, two. Outside, 3-2. Well, let's see what John Felsky does here. Schmidt is looking for the third base coach, and so is Virgil to see whether they're running. Strike them out, throw them out situation if they go. They're not going. He struck him out, and that's why. Russell down on strikes, and Felsky guessed right. Again, it was the Zane Smith fastball on the 3-2 pitch. He's overpowered some hitters tonight with that pitch. Steve Jeltz has not done what they expected. 187, no homers, and 11 RBIs. They're shortstop. Fast strike on one. Murphy is giving Jouts left center field. He's over a few steps toward right. A lot of coaches with a right-handed batter, coaches at the third base, go pretty deep to avoid getting hit with a line drive. Dave Bristol stays up at this end. He's a tough old guy. Outside. Two one. Three and one. Two. Now it's automatic. They will be running, and the three-two is ball four. Now the batter is John Denny with the bases loaded and two down. He's at 143. Ravella should throw him out. And he does. The Phillies strand three. We go to the bottom of the second scoreless.
Coming up this Saturday, Chris Economaki looks at the future of street versus track racing. That'll be on Motor Week Illustrated, 535 Eastern Time, Saturday on the Superstation. Speaking of the All-Star Game, Dale Murphy picked up the most votes this year in the major leagues. Uh, Cal Ripken, same sort of individual, was second. He's the shortstop of Baltimore. Hank Aaron did it for the Braves back in 70 and 71. So Aaron and Murphy, the only Atlanta Braves to lead in total voting. Here's the Vela. He'll be followed by Sorrell. And they announced the pitching staff for the National League. Rick Mailer didn't make it with 12 wins. Joaquin Andujar, Scott Geraltz of the Giants, Dwight Gooden of the Mets, Gossage of San Diego, Lamar Hoyt, his teammate. To the mound, Zavella's out number one. Jeff Reard made it from Montreal. Nolan Ryan from Houston was selected. Fernando Valenzuela from the Dodgers. For the American League, Bert Blylev in Cleveland, Jay Howell, Oakland, Jim Key from Toronto, Willie Hernandez from Detroit, Jack Morris from Detroit, Dan Petrie, Detroit, Dave Steve, Toronto, Donnie Moore, California Angels, made the All-Star team. That was a pitching staff. And we're very happy for our old friend Donnie. Yes, He's sir. done a great job over there for California. There is Rick Mailer, who's 12 wins. Well, there was of other starters, Gooden and Bouncer Short. Two down, Cerrone hits the short. One yep. thing to keep in mind on that National League pitching staff, though, Jeff Reardon's got a troublesome elbow. And we'll have to see whether he's able to pitch anymore the rest of the week. If he can't pitch the rest of the week, I doubt he'll go to the All-Star game. They then would pick an alternate. And maybe Mailer could sneak in that way. And O'Hara and, uh, with his 15 wins and Gooden with his 12, the only two with records comparable to Mailer's with his 12 wins, I should say. He has lost seven. This is Smith. Two outs, bottom of the second. Rays have gone quietly in this inning. It's even quieter. Sam Well on a nice play. At the one, two, three after a troublesome first. We go to the third, still no score. We're going to the third. Other players will be selected, but here's a starting lineup for the All-Star game. Nationally, Gary Carter will be the catcher, Steve Garvey at first, Tommy Herr at second. He just edged Sandberg. At third base, Greg Nettles, San Diego. Shortstop is Ozzie Smith, who was second in balloting. In the outfield, Dale Murphy, Tony Gwynn, and Daryl Strawberry are the top vote getters, and there will be others selected. In the American League, Catcher Lance Parrish, Detroit. First base, Eddie Murray, Baltimore. This is Juan Samuel. Second base, Lou Whitaker, Detroit. Third base, George Brett, Kansas City. Shortstop is Cal Ripken of Baltimore. In the outfield, top three, Dave Winfield, Ricky Henderson, both of the Yankees, and Jim Rice of Boston. So you have the all-star teams and we look forward to the game, and Tuesday night it will be televised nationally. Sam Well went out 1-4-3 as Smith deflected a grounder out towards Zavella in the first inning. Philadelphia with one hit, the Braves with three. 1-1, one, one. curve low, 2-1. Not as many people pick the Dodgers to do well as picking other teams in the National League West, but Tom Lasorda has the Dodgers one game out of first right now. They beat the Cubs today. High pop right side, foul, out of play. 
San Diego leads by a game. They play the Cardinals later tonight. And Cincinnati five and a half. Houston six. Braves 12. And San Francisco 17 back. Smith with a full count. Pop foul back out of play. He was late on it. Boy, no one expected Gene Mock and the California Angels to do what they've done. They're five and a half in front of Oakland, and they've been first, I believe, just about all year in the American League West. Three, two, fouled away again. Rick Shue is on deck. And the pitch. Foul away again. Bobby Cox has a Toronto Blue Jays still in front by three and a half. New York's five and a half back. Then Baltimore eight and a half. The Red Sox nine and a half. And Milwaukee and Cleveland are the last two in the American League East. Three two. Driven a right center field. Well hit back toward the wall. This ball is out of here. Home run one, Samuel. That guy's a good player. And he's proving it every day. His eighth homer, and he hit it to right center field. One nothing, Philadelphia. Samuel gives you that rare combination of speed and power. If he gets on first, he can steal second with the best of them. And he's got power, and as you see on that swing, he's got power to the off field as well. Claudel Washington started chasing that ball, too. He stopped. He knew it was gone. Smith hasn't given up many home runs. That's only the fourth in 80-plus innings. Rick Shue hits it toward Obe. Let's see. I guess it was foul. Hit it off his foot. Off his shoe. Oh, good, Peter. Great. Oh, you're quick. Thought I had Jerry Royster in that dugout for a second. That was Juan Samuel. Here's a 1-1. Curveball inside, 2-1. Driven toward center, but Murphy should handle it. One away for Von Hayes. Texas nothing, Yankees batting bottom of the first. Kansas City one, Cleveland nothing. They're in the third. Chicago, Baltimore one one in the second. And the Tigers and the Twins are scoreless in the third at Detroit. Montreal and Cincinnati scoreless in the third. One oh. Two and oh. Two and one. Had it by him, two balls and two strikes. Hayes bounced to the mound first time up. Got him. Fastball strikeout for Zane Smith. That's his fourth, and we're only in the top of the third. Now Glenn Wilson. Pete Van Weren and Ernie Johnson with you from Atlanta. 
first of a four game series. Then three days off from National League play. Curveball high. We go to New York right after the All Star break. New York, Montreal, and Philadelphia before getting back to Atlanta. Well, he's throwing hard. It's almost as though that home run really irritates him. And they do, believe me. One ball, one strike. Curve is low and away. Two balls and one strike. Foul away. He was late on the fastball. Bob Welch was a winner today as the Dodgers beat the Cubs 3 1. Now a 2 2. Curve driven. Zavella, nice catch. Wilson hit it hard and Zavella speared it. But Philadelphia on a home run by Juan Samuel lead it 1 0 going to the bottom of the third. John Denny and the Phillies lead 1-0. We go to the bottom of the third near speed. Thank you, Ernie. Top of the order for Atlanta. We have a defensive change for Philadelphia. Luis Aguayo has taken over at third base. Now, we don't know the reason for that. Rick Shu started the game there. There's Luis Aguayo. We'll give you any information we receive from the Phillies clubhouse on why that change was made. Claudel Washington, Rafael Ramirez, and Dale Murphy all had base hits in the first inning. Didn't Shu hit one down off his foot? Yes, he did. That, that might be it. As you can see, Claudel has hit John Denny very well in his career. Nine for 18 now. Did not get the breaking ball 0-1. One nothing Phillies lead it. Washington now at 278 for the year. That's going to bounce up there. Gets by everybody. Two and one the count on Washington. And the 2-1 on the way. Got the fastball by him. 2-2. Two two. Now the 2-2 two -two pitch. Hit to the right side. Samwell will handle it. One away. That'll bring up Rafael Ramirez, who extended his hitting streak to 10 games in the first inning when he lined a single to right. Batting average continues to climb for Ramirez. He was in the 250s for a good part of the season. Now he's got that average up to 274. One ball, no strikes. At the knees for a strike and the count even on Ramirez. Murphy on deck. Rafi's got that elbow wrapped again tonight. He's been playing with a bad elbow just about all season. Off speed strike in the inside corner, one and two. And now the one two on the way. Popped him up into shallow right center field. Samwell going back, the center fielder coming on, and the diving catch is made out there by Von Hayes. Good play by the Philadelphia center fielder on a looping fly ball and Denny is now retired eight straight some outfielders are very adept at this they make up their mind I'm going to slide in the outfield like I'm sliding in the second base now watch it slide Vaughn beautiful catch 
Murphy had an infield single his first time. That loaded the bases in the first inning. Denny then struck out Horner, struck out Harper, got Oberkfell and a ground ball to end the inning. And since Murphy's hit, eight in a row have been retired. Two outs in the bottom of the third. Phillies lead it 1-0 on Juan Samuels homer. Toward third, Aguayo on a tough bounce. Gets a throw to first, a tough bounce there too. Schmidt handled it, and the inning's over. Good play on both ends there. Aguayo fielded a tough hop at third, and Schmidt took care of a tough hop at first. One, two, three for Atlanta in the third. It's still 1-0 Philadelphia. This telecast by your laid-back broadcast team is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta Braves and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves and a Turner Broadcasting System is a no-no. Here's Mike Schmidt leading off the fourth. Schmidt doubled his first time up. Well, we get the word on Rick Shue, and the reason he left the ball game is he strained his lower back. He nope. did that hitting that foul off his shoe. Must have been. One ball, one strike, and Mike Schmidt. Sounds strange to be calling him the Philadelphia first baseman. Of course, it sounds strange to be calling Bob Horner the Braves' first baseman. Two of the top third basemen in the league changing positions this year. Schmidt criticized the Philadelphia fans for riding him and the rest of the Phillies. Right to the shortstop, Rafael Ramirez. Hit it hard, but right at Ramirez, one down. Anyway, he criticized him in Montreal when he came home for the next home game. He went out to batting practice, infield practice, with a big wig on fake beard or something and uh, everyone took it the way it was intended and applauded him and I think he's back in their good graces or most of the people anyway Ozzy Virgil walked his first time I think he broke his bat on that foul ball well we've had a lot of bats broken tonight on foul balls it's about the third Philadelphia hitter that's had to go back to the dugout after fouling one off One run, two hits for the Phillies. No runs, three hits Atlanta. We're in the top of the fourth. You ever notice, Pete, that when you strike out at Atlanta, full, this is a good place to hit. Hit a lot of home runs. But when you strike out, I think you have to walk the farthest of it any is place in the league to that dugout. It That's is why a Every long once in a while, somebody runs. <laughs> that is a long ways from home plate <laughs> to the dugout. Especially if the bases were loaded when you did it. There's the one strike pitch from Zane Smith, and it misses one and one. Breaking ball a little bit low. Two balls and a strike on Ozzie Virgil, who got a chance to play last year when Bo Diaz was injured. And he has locked up the starting catcher's job now for Philadelphia. Diaz has had some injury problems again this year. But as long as Ozzie keeps hitting in the 290s, and he's got power too, 11 home runs this year, he's going to be in that lineup. That ball is hit high and fairly deep to left, but playable. Terry Harper out there waiting. He's got it. And there are two down. That'll bring up John Russell, who struck out his first time. The Phillies are trying to beat the Braves for the first time this year. You'll remember the season started on a very cheerful note for Atlanta. They opened up the season in Philadelphia and won those first two games of the year. Here's the 1-0 pitch. 2-0 the count. It was a little bit cooler on opening night in Philadelphia than it is here tonight. Say about a 50 degree difference. Take it on 
First baseman Bob Horner has it going toward the line. He'll take it himself, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Zane Smith. Bottom half of the fourth inning coming up, and there's no change in our score. The bottom half of the fourth inning, Bob Horner, Terry Harper, Ken Obergfell do up. There's just been another trade made in baseball. This one over the American League. The Chicago White Sox have traded pitcher Tim Lawler to the Boston Red Sox in return for outfielder Reed Nichols and a player to be named later. Lawler was not having that good a year with the White Sox. He was 3-5, and five, and he's now at Boston. Nichols, a reserve outfielder with the Red Sox, joins Chicago. And the count on Bob Horner, even one ball, one strike. Horner, a strikeout victim in the first inning. There haven't been many left-handers for the Red Sox that have been successful at Fenway Park. The green Monsters killed them. Broken bat roller toward short. Jeltz on the first in time. Remember opening night, Jeltz made three errors. And they've been raving about his defensive ability. Well, he has really settled down. He's made only eight errors now all season at shortstop. Great. That might have been opening night jitters. Might have been that cold weather, too. That baseball felt like a croquet ball at times. Up here, you can get the jitters every night, especially if the crowd is huge and the game means something. Terry Harper struck out his first time. Right to the third baseman, Aguayo. Mr. Denny has really settled down, too, hasn't he? Denny gave up three straight hits to open the game, and he's retired 11 straight since then. Ken Oberg fell the batter. He bounced to first his first time. In for a strike, nothing in one. As Ernie said at the outset of the broadcast, Danny doesn't just get up there and try to blow hitters away. He really knows how to pitch. Changes speeds, moves the ball in and out. There's an off-speed pitch that missed outside. If you're a hitter, a very difficult pitcher to guess along with. There's a breaking ball for a strike one and two. Braves trail 1-0, bottom half of the fourth. And the 1-2 is a curve, line foul down toward the Braves bullpen. Stayed high. Two and two now on Ken Obergfeld. Juan Samuel's home run. The difference in the ball game right now. He hit it in the top of the third with the bases empty. And there's a line drive. Base hit right field. Glenn Wilson up with the ball quickly. Obergfeld aboard with a two-out single. Hit number four off John Denny. That'll bring up Paul Zabella, who was thrown out pitcher to first. Leading off inning number two. A strike 0 and 1. This has not been a good homestand for Atlanta. The Braves came off that long road trip, winning seven, losing seven. Hope to win some ball games on this long homestand, but they've lost six of the first seven games since coming home. Four straight to the Mets, then two out of three to Montreal. Aguayo's going to have a long throw, but he got it there just in time to end the inning. So the Braves pick up a base hit, and that's all. We go to the fifth inning. The Phillies still lead by that one run. For 
from Monday's headline Sunday night catch the sports page Pepper Rogers head coach of the Memphis Showboats will join Nick Charles and Kevin Christopher this USFL championship Sunday that's at 10 5 Eastern time right here on the Superstation. In the top half of the fifth inning, Phillies will have Steve Jelts, John Denny, and Juan Samuel do up against Zane Smith. Special birthday wish goes out to Martha Sisk of Nashville, Tennessee, watching on the cable tonight, and also stadium employee Brooke Whitmire wants to be remembered to his grandfather Creed Baker up in Murphy, North Carolina, who never misses a Braves game. One ball, no strikes, and Steve Jelts, who walked his first time. Second baseman Zuvella got a glove on it, but that's all. Jelts will reach. It'll be a base hit. Third hit off of Zane Smith. He hit it right in the hole between Horner and Zavella. Paul came close, but got away from him. It'll go as an infield hit, and it should have been scored that way. Now look for the bunt from John Denny, who grounded the second his first time. It's a foul, 0 and 1. Elsewhere, Montreal at Cincinnati, scoreless there in the fourth. Giants and Pirates tied 4 4 there in the third in Pittsburgh. The other game, San Diego at St. Louis, New York at Houston. Not yet underway or just underway. The bunt down the first base side foul. It's 0 and 2 in the American League. Yankees lead Texas 3-0 after 2. Kansas City leads Cleveland 1-0 after 4. Chicago 3, Baltimore 1 after 3. Minnesota at Detroit tied 1-1 after 4. All the other games in the American League later. One afternoon game in the National. The Dodgers beat the Cubs 3-1. L.A. now just one game back of San Diego. Denny will square again and take a ball. But it foul. That's a strikeout. Credit Zane Smith with his fifth strikeout of the game. Out number one in the fifth inning. Back we go to the top of the order. Juan Samuel, who grounded to second in the first, hit his eighth homer of the year in the third. Samuel now batting 263. He has 16 doubles, 6 triples, 8 homers, 32 RBIs, and 29 stolen bases. And he is just getting started in his major league career. Only 24 years old in his second full year with the Phillies. One ball, no strikes. Shane Raleigh against Steve Bedrosian tomorrow night. Charles Hudson against Rick Mailer on Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. Kevin Gross against Pasquale Perez. And then it's the All-Star break. The count 2-0. and oh. One run, three hits for the Phillies. No runs, four hits Atlanta. Fifth inning. Two and one now on Samuel. They're underway in Houston now. Mets did not score in the top of the first. The Mets going for their tenth straight win in that game. And Nolan Ryan in that game needs seven strikeouts to become the first pitcher to ever fan 4,000 in his career. Here's the 2-1, bouncing ball foul. 2-2. Two two. Louis Aguayo waiting on deck. Here's the 2-2, struck him out. Breaking ball. 
Six strikeouts now for Zane Smith. Good curveball. He hit him out on his front foot. If you do that, you've got a good chance of getting him out and sometimes striking him out. Samuel goes right to the turf. That matches Zane Smith's strikeout high for this season. He had six against the Giants back on June 10th. We're only in the fifth inning of this game, and here's Aguayo batting for the first time, hitting 227, two homers, eight RBIs. He took over at third for Rick Shu, who suffered a lower back strain. Up the middle and through in the center field base hit. Samwell will take the turn, or correction, uh, Jeltz will take the turn and hold at second. That's the fourth hit off Zane Smith. And Vaughn Hayes steps in. Hayes did something this year that very few major league players have ever done in that 26 to 7 game against the New York Mets. Remember when the Phillies scored all those runs? Hayes hit two home runs in the first inning. One ball, no strikes. He was batting in the leadoff spot in that particular game. He let off the game with a homer. Later on in the inning, came up again, hit another one. I've never done that. You? A lot of guys haven't. Line toward left. Terry Harper makes the diving try. He caught it. He caught it. And the inning's over. Good play by Harper. Boy, if that ball got by him, two runs would have scored. But we've got to the bottom half of the fifth inning, and it's still a one-run game. Well, you can wrap up the scoring that easy. Juan Samuel hit the line drive home run over the right center field fence in the third. one nothing Philadelphia, bottom of the fifth, and Cerrone bounces it wide a third and pass to Guayo. Jilts has time, and what a play by Steve Jilts. And if you're wondering, Rick Cerrone does run very, very poorly. For whatever reason, Aguayo missed it, and Steve Jilts got it on the outfield grass. And he had to make a long throw. He plants and throws and just nips the run. Well, there's one away in the Braves' pit. Now the pitch is Zane Smith. Cuts and misses strike one. Along with Skip Carey, John Sterling with you now from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium as we go to the second half of the ball game. one nothing Philadelphia. And for those who tuned in late, the Braves had a phenomenal opportunity in the first inning. Base hits by Washington, Ramirez, an infield single by Murphy. Bases loaded, no one out, and then Denny got out of it without a run. Zane Smith strikes out two ways. With the bases loaded and no one out, Denny struck out. Corner and Harper back to back, then got Obi on a ground ball to Mike Schmidt at first. So you're caught up. Bottom of the fifth inning now with two outs in the top of the order in Claudel Washington. Usually when you let a, a pitcher like Denny, especially as good a pitcher as Denny, escape, you're in trouble. That's lined right to Samuel, who makes the grab at second, and the inning is quickly over. Nothing across for the Braves, and at the end of five, one nothing Phillies. Look at some of the stats on the Phils. Very much like the Braves, the Phillies, an unbalanced team they have. Only a couple of left-hand hitters on the whole ball club, and as a result, they 12 games under against right-hand pitching. Glenn Wilson leads off the six and takes it outside. Glenn Wilson is finally coming into his own. He's flirted with it a couple of years with the Tigers and last year with the Phils. Having a very big season this year with 59 RBIs at the break. 2-0. Tonight, Wilson has struck out and line to second baseman Zubella. That's foul back, 2-1. and one. The Phillies are run on four hits. The Braves, no runs on four hits. And the only run on Juan Samuel's 
Eighth home run of the year. That was back in the third. Curveball is lined to left field, and it could be two. In fact, it will be two. Harper plays it off the wall. Wilson at second base. Now that proves that sometimes the way you play your outfield doesn't work out. The Braves had him played as if he were a left-hand hitter way around toward right field. So he pulls the ball hard. Look where Harper was. That's Normally, that's a routine single. Maybe a line drive right at him for an out. But in this case, it's a double. Scouting reports, I guess, indicated to play him as an off-field hitter. Now here's Mike Schmidt. The Phillies have a pretty important run there. The way John Denny is pitching, that second run could be very important. That pitch inside of Mike Schmidt, ball one. Schmidt, he just missed a home run. He lined a double off the left center field wall earlier. I have to ask you a very important question here when we have a moment. Okay, I certainly will gear myself up for it. Yeah, gear up. It's 2 0. If there were more than one vendor in the bar ballpark, would you ever buy anything whose sales pitch was to walk through the stands barking like a dog? I would not. No, no, would I. But we have a vendor here, that's his thing. Well. <laughs> Everyone should have their own pursuits, I think. Two and one. I like some things. You like some things. This guy likes to bark like a dog. Maybe he's selling... No. Hmm. Now, if we go a step further and find out his parents named him Rex. Well, then. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> Two and one. Obert Fell will hold the runner and throw across. Horner has to tag Schmitty going by. He does one away. Dazzy Virgil stands in. The Phillies really could make a trade. They have two pretty good hitting catchers, and there are a scarcity of good hitting catchers. Bo Diaz backs up Virgil when he's not injured. And that's one surplus the Phillies have. Jeff Devin, by the way, gets up in the Braves bullpen. That's a fair ball, says John McSherry, and Obi will throw out Virgil. And going over to third on the play alertly is Glenn Wilson. It was a fair ball just over the bag, and Obrickfell made a good play, as he normally does. See John McSherry positioning himself doing his job. And Obergefell can pick it there at third base. Oh, he didn't have, feel he had time to look the runner back. He had to make the play to first right away. Now two way with the runner at third. And here's John Russell. One of the Philadelphia rookies takes the breaking ball inside. Zane Smith pretty much a two pitch pitcher. Breaking ball and fastball. His Pitches move a lot. He's been a very bright note for the Braves in this unhappy year. Zane Smith is a good lefty starting pitcher. He threw the fastball by Russell. Russell has chased a lot of high fastballs tonight. And the count one and one. Wilson at third, two outs, top of the sixth. One nothing Philadelphia. Skip Carey, John Sterling with you from Atlanta. Down the right field line, it'll be foul. Claudell gives it a look for the ball, sails into the Braves bullpen and and out. I don't know why Debman's warming up. Zane Smith batted last inning, so he won't be coming up for a couple of innings. Zane is certainly in control of things, sir. It'll be a one-two. Curveball is grounded foul. The count remains one and two. Also on his radio show before the game, Eddie Haas was saying that he felt he had overworked Deadman with all the extra inning games that we've had in recent days. So I'm really surprised to see him up in this spot. Hmm. The one-two. Fastball misses outside, two and two. 
what hasn't been mentioned too much, Gene Garber and Rick Camp both pitched pretty well in relief of late. They pitched mostly long relief, so not the glamorous area. And the 2-2. Struck him out. That is strikeout number seven for Zane Smith. He's pitched well. No runs on a hit for the Bills. They leave one. End of five and a half. One nothing Philadelphia. Today, the Braves banner, your first issue, will feature stories on Bob Horner, Ken Overfell, Terry Harper, and Mel Thompson, along with a regular lineup of columnists, stats, and outstanding photography to subscribe, Sunday, 95, the Braves banner, and all that stuff. And the pitch is outside ball one. If you wanted to go on, you could. Oh, that's okay. It's less than a dollar an issue. All right. Thank you. Rafi Benzoit, 2-0. I'd like to wish a happy birthday to Sandra Coleman, who is 24 years old today. Sister Sherry asked for that. 3 0 on Ramirez. Braves down 1 0, bottom of the sixth. The automatic. Denny has struck out three. He's not walked a batter. He was 3 and 2 with Bob Horner. Bases loaded no one out in the first and struck Horner out. The 3 1 is hit right up the middle. Ramirez, a hot hitter. Two for three tonight. He's hit in ten straight. Also want to say hello to Dorothy and Gene Thompson. Watch all the Braves games in Waynesboro, Virginia. To Mr. Ray Hips, 77 years old a week ago, watching in Asheville, North Carolina. He and his wife, Hazel, celebrated their 58th anniversary of this year to watch all the Braves games. I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm generally late on just about everything. Here's Murph with a man on. And the curveball bends outside, ball one. A run on five hits for the Phils. No runs, five hits for the Braves. Dale Murphy, the leading vote getter for all the players in the All-Star game. And some honor. And he deserves it. Lines this one all right. Now Wilson is right there to make the catch, and Ramirez has to get back to first. Murph hit it on the button, but Wilson ran it down and right one away. Bob Horner has struck out and grounded to short. Amazing the coincidences. The Phillies are 40, 37 and 45. The Braves are 35 and 47. They're both fifth in their divisions. The curveball hits slowly to short. Aguayo cuts in front, makes the play. That's a nice play. Two way and Ramirez, the tying run, moves to second base. And they have both moved their longtime third baseman to first base. Now two way and Terry Harper will bat with a tying run at second base. Harper 0 for 2. He's been a very streaky hitter this year and he's in a hot streak. Hit something like 348 in his last 15 games. Ramirez at second with two out. Carrying the tying run. You see the lead that Rafi has. And the slider outside, ball one. That curveball for a strike. It is a curveball. Boy, he throws it like a palm ball. It just floats. Yeah, it is. Arm motion seems to be as fast as with his fastball. He got a hit against Denny. He doesn't walk anyone. There's that pitch again. It's up high, two and one. And boy, he comes out to pitch. He's a pleasure to play behind. He's of the Steve Carlton school. Get it back, get the sign, and throw it. The two one. There's that curveball, and he pops him up. Mike Schmidt will make the call, the catch, and end the inning. For the Braves, no runs on a hit. They leave one. At the end of six, one nothing Philadelphia. <laughs> At 
At the end of six, a run five hits, no errors for the Phils, no runs five hits, and no errors for the Braves. So the one run, Juan Samuel's home run, holding up. Yeah, as you look at the pitching matchups in the rest of the series, Friday night, Saturday night at 7.35, Sunday afternoon at 2.05. We go to the top of the seventh, and here's Skip. Okay, John, thank you, Steve Jeltz. Corks it down the right field line. Washington had him played perfectly. One up. You saw those pitching pairings, and a reminder that we'll have all those games for you right here on TBS. In stereo. Even though we're playing in mono, the broadcast itself will come to you in stereo. Here's John Denny. He's bounced to second and struck out. One ball, no strikes. Dale Murphy wants it and has it two out. Zane Smith has pitched himself a classic, but then so has John Denny. Well, we've run our way through another director and producer. Oh, yes. oh, that's right, yeah. Skip Ellison directing mm -hmm. tonight. Rodney Triplett producing. Yeah, I like him better than those other guys. <laughs> Dick Fontaine is our associate director. <laughs> you didn't know about Dick Fontaine. <laughs> I did not know. Here's Juan Samuel. He has that oh. third inning homer. <laughs> Well, ever since our AD in L.A., I mentioned her name, and she jumped all over me because she doesn't use that name. Oh. I decided that our guy should have a stage oh. name, too. Oh, and two, the count. I'd like to get him on a stage as soon as possible. And one leaves in five minutes. Mm -hmm. The actor was hungry, so the curtain came down with a roll. Mm -hmm. When you're 12 under, folks, you just grasp. <laughs> Stumble through these things. Oh, and two is the count to one Samuel, who could easily reverse his names and be known as Samuel One. When you're 12 under, one and two is the count. Luis Aguayo waits to hit next. He doesn't get cheated up there. He. Rips away. He's a leadoff man with eight homers, 32 RBIs, and 29 stolen bases. And he has cut down his airs to 10. A year ago at this time, he had 22. So he's growing up a little bit in the field as well. Two balls, two strikes. Struck him out with a high breaking ball. Zane got away with a pitch there. Samuel was asking the umpire, was it in the strike zone? Nothing doing in the top half of the seventh. We go to the bottom half with the Phillies on top. One nothing. seven to be home in time to I guess not. Oberfell leads off the bottom half of the seventh inning. Ken is one for two. He's singled in the fourth. And he singles again to start the seventh. There's the tying runner aboard. Jeff Dedman is in the Atlanta bullpen. And now Bruce Suter joins Dedman in the bullpen. That is the sixth about a hit. They had three of them in the first inning in succession with nobody out and got nothing out of it. 
that is the story of this game to this point. Zuvella will try to bunt him. Oh, it gets away. There's a break. That's a pass ball on Virgil, and it should have been. He either got crossed up or something. Well, let's look. Virgil, see if he's crossed up or not. I don't know if he thought the ball was going to break or not. He had the mitt turned the wrong way to make that play. Now the Braves can bunt the runner to third base. I have him with one man out, and Atlanta has three left-hand hitters on the bench. Don Carmen, a left-hander, begins to work in the Philadelphia bullpen, and he's joined by right-hander Larry Anderson. So both bullpens are filled to capacity here. Runner at second. Nobody out. The 1-0 to Zavella. He was going to butt again. Took it outside. 2-0. Rick Cerrone is on deck. Then Zane Smith is due to hit. There's the bullpen activity for Philly. A little tap. The runner's coming over. They're going to go to third, and he's going to be out. There's a bad bit of base running by Obergefell. He thought, obviously, that the ball was hit more slowly than it was. And he was out easily. Well, that was a tremendous base running mistake by Ken Obergefell. You don't run when the ball is hit in front of you, especially when you're the tying run. He's out here to Tuesday. Now the Braves now only have a run runner on first base and one out. That hurts. Here's Rick Sarone. And this is not an attempt to bury Obergefell, who has had a better year than most, but what you saw there is a classic example of how a team finishes fifth mm -hmm. with good players. Mm -hmm. A little tap. Boy, Schmidt got it to him in a hurry, didn't he? Two down. That's sort of a page out of Chris Chambliss's book. Get it to him as quickly as he can so he has time to find the bag on his own, but he almost overrushed that play. That's pretty good thinking on Schmidt's part. He's playing very well at first base, very much the way Bob Horner has played for the Braves. Mike Schmidt, a great athlete. And look at him here. He feeds it to him, and then he can catch it and run to the bag. Chris Shambliss will come on to hit for Zane Smith. Smith fits great baseball again. Seven innings. Five hits, seven strikeouts, two walks, one run. The home run to the off field by Sam Wells. Check it, he had eight strikeouts. My mistake. Thanks, Matt. Well, he had seven strikeouts, too, but then a little later he got his eight. So he has done his part of it. But unless Chris Chambliss delivers here, he can only be a loser or pitch to no decision in this game. Curve outside, one ball, no strike. Two and oh. Fordell Washington waits on deck. He is one for three, but has hit the ball sharply each time up there. strike two and one Chris had to be looking for the breaking ball there because that pitch was right there the pitch is low and it's three and one so Chambliss is in the driver's seat again here tying runners at second there are two up Curve ball bounced foul past first. He was out in front on it. And we're down to a pitch of decision on Chris Chambliss. Three balls, two strikes. The left hand hitter waits. Right field, base hit. He's got a great arm. Watch the play at the plate. He is going to be safe. 
Pegarano. Wilson's throw was up the first baseline. It beat him to the area of the plate, but Zavella got in. Chambliss has delivered. Zane Smith is off the hook, and the game is tied. Well, this ball was almost hit too hard by Chambers. He hit a bullet to right field. And Glenn Wilson has a terrific arm. He fielded it on one hop. But his throw was just to the first base side of the plate. And Zoo beat Ozzy Virgil there. No argument. The game is tied at one, and Chambers gets a big hit. There's quite a... Let up curve ball low, one ball, no stick. It's even now at one and one. Well, Chambla's making another bid to get back into the lineup. Speed breaking ball, it's one and two. speed curve and the inning is over. So Denny rallies to get out of it recording his fourth strikeout. But the Braves tie it. A run on two hits and a runner left. We go to the eighth inning. Right back where we started. We go to the eighth inning. Jeff Dedman on to pitch for Atlanta. face Aguayo, Hayes, and Wilson in the eighth inning. And in that order, the Braves are 4-0 and against the Phils. This year, Aguayo entered the game back in the third after Rick Shue fouled a ball off his shoe. One ball, no strikes. Stedman has been struggling lately. He's 4-1. 2.45 earned run ever. No saves, but he hasn't had a save opportunity yet. Fastball moved down and in to the right hand hitter. It's 2 0. Letters two and one. Can of proverbial horn. One up. It was good to see the Phillies squadron of announcers come in here. Chris Wheeler, Andy <laughs> Musser, Harry Callis, Richie Ashburn. And there's a strike 0 and 1. Well, they used to have six announcers at one time. Remember that? Tim McCarver? Yeah, and he was with them. And somebody else, I think. Oh. Robin Roberts? No. Oh, and two to Hay. Uh oh, that's trouble. And he can run like the wind. He's second easily. And there's the go ahead run on with one away. And the third RBI man in the National League, Glenn Wilson, is the batter. He's one for three. 
Let's look at the pitch. It was up too high. A little bit to the outside of the plate. And Hayes went with it, just kind of stroked it right down the left field line. If that was Debman's breaking ball, it didn't go down at all. Kind of hung up there for Hayes, and he deposited it down the left field line. Wilson has struck out line to second and double. folks into the seats and I think everybody's okay boy that ball was really ripped there's Hayes leading away at second base The middle Deadman couldn't get it. He should have. Here comes. Oh, Hayes stumbled. Murphy's throw. He's going to be safe if he touched home plate. And he comes back to make sure. And the other runner is at second base. See who the air is on. It was a perfect throw. Hayes stumbled at third base or he would have scored easily. Turned out to be a bang bang play. Watch Jeff Deadman just miss this comeback. Hayes hits it up the middle. And Debman, well, let's see how he finishes up. He was a little slow getting to the ball. He finished up okay, slow getting to his backhand side. Now, Hayes at this point had already stumbled, and Murphy's throw pretty true. Ball just went right past her own. No air is charged. Wilson's, there was an air charge, but they haven't told us who it was on yet. Pitch is low. One ball knows they give Murphy an air for a perfect throw to the plate. I see. <sighs> Truth were known, you don't even have to give an air on that play. The runner's safe. The guy goes to second on the throw to the plate. Absolutely. And that's that is why they gave him the air because the ball went past their own and enabled. Wilson to go to second base. Now they're going to put Mike aboard. But Jeff almost threw it to the backstop. It's 3 0. Oh. And here's Ossie Virgil. He has walked, flied to left, bounced to third. It's 2 1. Phillies, Gene Garber now throwing in the Atlanta bullpen. So Virgil stands in, and the Phillies now have a chance to break it wide open. They are yet to beat the Braves this year. Good live fast strike right down the heart of the plate. Knuckle curve low. Sort of a strange outfield alignment on Virgil. Murphy plays him shaded toward left. Washington is in straightaway right. And a tremendous amount of room in right center for it. Double play ball, maybe. Ramirez, there's one. There's two. So the Braves get out of it without further damage. As they turn it over, the Phillies reclaim the lead with a run on two hits, and they leave a batter. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Philadelphia, 2-1. Go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Ramirez, Murphy, and Horner will be the batters for Atlanta. Gary Maddox, one of the best. That is the game to play center for the Phillies. Von Hayes moves to left. And John Russell is out of the game. Maddox will bat in the number seven spot and will lead off the Philadelphia ninth inning. Ramirez has two hits. The curve is outside. One ball, no strengths. John Sterling, Skip Carey with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. 
The Phils have the lead in the bottom of the eighth. There's that curveball. He's made a living off that all night. Don Carmen up again in the Philadelphia bullpen. At the knees on the outside edge, though Ramirez didn't think so, and the count is one and two. Larry Anderson, the right-hander. Check, swing, pop. One out. I bet he wishes he'd have followed through. He'd have hit it in the right center field. Here's Murph, one for three. Yeah. Infield hit on the first. He has since bounced to third and lined to right. Shane Raleigh and Steve Bedrosian, the pitching pairings tomorrow. Oh, what a horrible homestand this has been for Atlanta. The 1-0 pitch. It's 2-0. Oh. Swung and missed. It's 2-1. and one. Bob Horner waits on deck. He hung a curveball there, but too far up for Murph to do anything with it. It's three and one. You almost get the impression that Denny is one base runner away from being out of here. Well, we're about to find out if that's the case. He walks Murphy. And that is his first walk. And I'm wrong. They're going to stay with him, and Horner will be the batter. Well, I bet they want him to pitch to Horner and maybe Terry Harper. The Braves have a couple of lefty hitters on the bench, but the Phils have an awfully good left-hander in the bullpen. Very unknown left-hander, but he won't be unknown for too long. Don Carmen. Challenged him with a fastball. Got away with it. 0-1. Back in the first, Washington, Ramirez, and Murphy all singled, and then... Denny rallied to strike out Horner and Harper, got over fell on an infield roller. And since then, he has been very tough. Bruce Suter up again in the Atlanta bullpen. He just missed with that one. A ball and a strike. Two and one. Well, Horns had a two-run homer to tie it up in the late innings last night. A two-run shot here would give Atlanta the lead. Had him way out in front with that curve. It's two and two. What we often lose sight of, I think. Think of the intestinal fortitude it takes to throw a pitch like that mm. to a hitter like a Bob Horner yeah. or a Dale Murphy or a Mike Schmidt. I mean, you're risking your life up. Two balls, two strikes. Deep short. He boots it. Throws to first. Safe. He came off the bat. It'll be a boot on Joe. What might have been a double play winds up nothing except a break for Atlanta. Boy, and Joe's normally a smooth article at shortstop. Might have played this one a bit nonchalantly to the side. It's a curveball away. Horner tries to pull it. And you see Joe's. He could have gotten his body in front of it. He booted it, and the throw just missed getting Horner. So the Braves get a break and have the tying run at second and the go-ahead run at first. Fastball out 
outside. Terry Harper has struck out, bounced to third, hopped to first. Right through there, one and one. Murphy with very good speed at second. Horner with average to below speed at first. It's 2-1 Philadelphia in the eighth. Ken Obergfell waits on deck. He's been looking for that breaking ball and he's thrown him two straight fastballs for strikes. What do you guess now? Fastball struck him out. It looked like, and I'm not knocking him, but it looked like he made up his mind he was going to hit the curve ball and never got one. And then he puts this at the knees on the outside corner. There's a terrific pitch. Jeltz hadn't made an error in 47 games. Here comes John Felsky. He's got Carmen in the bullpen. He's got a left-hand hitter, Ken Obergfell, in the batter's box. And the Braves don't have much in the way of pop from the right side on their bench. But he hasn't made a move yet. Now he has. That's it. John Denny, boy, a superlative pitching performance here. Just like Zane Smith had. And the good fans here in Atlanta give Denny a big hand as he goes off, and he deserved it. He pitched a dandy ball game. Don Carmen, young left-hander, comes crowding in from the Philadelphia bullpen to face Obergfell with two on and two out in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And we'll see how that duel works out when we come back right after this. See the stats on Don Carmen. He's a pretty good one. He'll face Obergfell with Murphy at second, Horner at first, and two up. Carmen out of Oklahoma City. Lives now in Camargo, Oklahoma. 6'3", 190-pounder. Boy, does he have some stats. He's pitched 45 in the third innings, given up only 30 hits. And he's walked 18 and struck out 40. Those are terrific stats. And when you're a short reliever left-handed, that's a pretty good life. I mean, not that it's easy, don't get me wrong, but normally you're in to pitch to one guy, maybe two, maybe yeah. an inning at the yeah. top. And this is a young guy. He could be around forever in this league because he's a good pitcher. And there are your runners. Obi is two out of three. Two solid singles against... John Denny, who was magnificent here, he went seven and two-thirds innings, allowed seven hits, struck out five, walked only one, has allowed one run to this point, though the runners on base are his responsibility. Don Carmen ready to go to work. Anderson continues to work in their bullpen. <laughs> Smoke on the outside edge, 0 and 1. You wonder why don't they pinch hit for the left hand hitter? Well, they have on their bench Bruce Benedict with three RBIs hitting 245. Glenn Hubbard batting 211. Paul Rungi batting 111 as right hand hitter. And that is it. And that's a tremendous weakness of the Atlanta team. It really is. In fact, it changes the way managers will play against you and the way you can manage, in all fairness to Eddie House. If he had a big right-hand hitter, you might not see Carmen in the game now because you'd have that big right-hand hitter up with two on and two out. And you'd have to pitch to him or else load the bases. So the 0-2 to Obergfell. Just missed high and away. He's up over that 90 mile an hour. Mark with his Peter, no doubt about that. Again, 
and he just missed. Two and two. He's nibbled for the outside corner letter high twice. And even the count of two and two. Now does he feel he has Oberfell leaning over the plate? A little bit. If he does, he'll try to bust him in on his hand. The 2 2. Base hit center field. Oberfell delivers. Here comes Murphy. He'll score easily. Tie game. Boy, give Oberfell some credit. He took two pitches, an eyelash from strike three. And then hit a rope into center field. So all that strategy worked out in Philadelphia's favor except for one thing. They couldn't execute, and Ken Oberfeld could. We got a tie game. The pitch is a fastball down the middle this time, and Obi lines it right up the box to center field. Well, the ball game is tied at two, and maybe as Skip said, the best job of hitting with Obi was laying off those two pitches with a count of 0 and 2. And now Paul Zuvella will stand up. He's 0 for 3. A base hit could give Atlanta the lead as Horner edges away at second. Foul back this way, 0 and 1. Well, now John Denny can't win it. All he could do is lose it if Horner scores from second base and the Braves were to hold on in the ninth. Threw the fastball by him 0 2. Reds 2 nothing over the Expos after seven. Miss tying away one and two. Pirates six four over the Giants after seven. <laughs> Bouncing ball should end the inning. And it does, but the Braves battle back to tie the game. One hit, one unearned run, one big air, and two men left. We go to the ninth inning. Bruce Suter will enter the contest. We're tied 2-2. Bruce Suter enters the game to pitch. He will bat in the seventh spot in the order and Glenn Hubbard will play second base in bat ninth as we go to the ninth inning and Gary Maddox leads it off for Philadelphia. It's a 2-2 ball game. A check swing roller to third. Obergfell gloves it. One out. One pitch, one out. Maddox is retired. Steve Jeltz is due but he's being called back now. And Greg Gross will come on to pinch it for the Phillies. Gross is hitting 250 with 10 RBIs. He has no homer. Gross standing for Joe. He's had an awful time as a pinch hitter, just three out of 27, though he does have three RBIs. Phillies have used a lot of people in this game. They lost their starting third baseman, Rick Shue, to an injury earlier after he fouled the ball off his foot. And the veteran left-hand hitter stands in. One ball, no strikes. Kent to Colby to the left. Larry Anderson, two right-handers in the Philly pack. One and one to Gross. John Sterling, Skip Carey with you from the ballpark in Atlanta. Two balls and a strike. Bob 
Chopped him up. Foul territory. Let's see if anybody has a play over near the seats. Oberkfell. Two out. So Gross fails. And Daryl Thomas will come on to pinch it for Don Carmen. Carmen went a third of an inning allowed a hit. And either Tsakovi or Anderson will pitch the bottom half of the night. So here's Daryl Thomas who has modeled a number of uniforms. He's found the going tough. He's just 11 out of 54. 204. He does have two homers and six RBI. 10,316 the paid attendance here tonight. Thomas, the switch hitter, bats left against Suter. One base on balls, five strikeouts. Atlanta, Carmen, one-third of an inning, one hit. Cardinals lead the Padres 3-0 after three. Mets 1-0 over Houston after three. 0-1 to Daryl Thomas. Thomas will probably stay in the game to replace Jeltz at shortstop. the strength is the count. Into short center. Murph is there. That's that. Suter gets him one, two, three. Nothing doing in the top half of the ninth inning. We go to the bottom half. All tied at two. And Greg Gross stays in the game to play first base. Luis Aguayo moves from third to short, and Mike Schmidt has moved from first to third. Larry Anderson is the pitcher for Philadelphia. Anderson is three and two, a 3.4 and run average, two saves. He is a journeyman. He's been around a while, a lot of years in Triple A, and he'll face Rick Cerrone to lead it off for the Braves. Anderson out of Portland, Oregon. He's been in pro ball since 71. He's played at Reno, Sarasota, Reno again, San Antonio, Oklahoma City, Cleveland, Toledo, Williamsport, Toledo, Cleveland, Portland, Tacoma, Cleveland, Portland, <laughs> Seattle for a couple of years, Salt Lake, Portland, and the Phillies. All aboard. Wow. Pitch to Cerrone, swung and missed. It's 0 1. He has seen the world. Into left center field. Pretty well hit. Hayes can't get there. It's up against the wall. And the winning run will be at second with nobody up. Tyrone rips the double to left center. He hit the daylight on it. Von Hayes on his horse, but over his head up against the wall. And the Braves really have a golden opportunity. With Cerrone at second and no one out. Now, Mill Thompson will go in and run for Cerrone. And Eddie probably, Hans. excuse me, probably the Braves will bunt him over. Eddie Haas has made his statement. He's going to try to win it right here. He's not going to hold his troops back to worry about a 16 inning game and I don't think you can argue with that you may never have this good a chance again Hubbard is an accomplished bunter the Phillies have no left handers in their bullpen if Hubbard can get the runner to third if in fact he bunts then the Phillies have a choice to make they either have to pitch to Washington and or Ramirez or walk them both and worry about Murphy and Horner but first let's see what Hubbard does 
He tried to bunt and missed, throw and one. Fastball high and away. They had the play on. Aguayo was racing over to cover third. The Phillies, of course, realized the importance of keeping that runner away from third base. A ball and a strike to the hub. This is his first at bat of the night. He's hitting 211, three homers, 20 RBI. He bunts hard toward first. They're going to go to third, and he's going to be safe. be a sacrifice for Hubbard and a fielder's choice. I don't blame Greg Gross for taking a shot over there, but Milk Thompson can fly. And that was the key to the play. It was a good bunt by Hubby. However, Gross was right on top of it, but you could see he wasn't going to get him. Don't forget, that's not a force. You have to tag him. And Thompson's safe now. The Braves have a phenomenal opportunity to win. First and third, no one out. They'll walk Claudell, I believe. But then they've got to face Ramirez, Murphy, and Horner. And don't forget, a fly ball will win, and you'll see, if they do walk Claudell, then you'll see the Phillies bring the infield in, the outfield in, and the Braves have to just about hit the ball to win the game. And also don't forget that the Braves had the bases loaded and nobody out in the first and came up empty, so this is not a lock by any stretch of the imagination. Well, they haven't decided yet what they'll do with Claudel, so we'll hang loose here. Hubbard at first, Thompson at third, and you've got the top of your order. Of you. The Braves couldn't ask for a better spot than the one they find themselves in. put him on as you would expect so again the base is loaded nobody out the infield will come in the outfield is in at little league depth there's ball three to is up again in the bullpen but it may be a little too late though he doesn't take him long he's throwing hard already there's ball four. They're loaded with nobody out. And here John Felsky's on the top step. First Virgil goes out. They want to give Tacovi a little more time. But he's not even throwing now. He's doing some knee bends. And it's going to be Anderson against Ramirez. Bruce Benedict limbers up in the Atlanta bullpen just in case for he will have to come in and catch now that Saron has been pinch run for. That's if the Braves fail to convert here. They've got an extra man on the infield and no left fielder. The pitch to Ramirez. Outside, ball one. This is a great alignment. I love this. Von Hayes has come in to play the infield. You can see it there. They've got nobody in left. I've seen it work. A foul back and out of play. The Braves, Dave Bristol, did it with Roland Office in Cincinnati one day. And the first ball was hit right to Roland. It was then the Braves center fielder. He threw home for a force out. Next guy got a base hit. Braves lost. It sure is funny looking, though, isn't it? The 1-1. One -one. Line drive, game over. And the Braves win it in regulation, 3-2, totals and highlights right after this. Braves win it 3-2 for Atlanta, 3-10-1, they left 11, Philadelphia 2-7-1, they left 8. 
Bruce Suter gets the win. He's now five and three. Larry Anderson, the loser. He's three and three. Rafael Ramirez, the game-winning RBI, his fourth of the year, 10,316 paid to see it. We have some highlights of the contest for you. Zane Smith started for the Braves. This is one of the eight strikeouts he recorded. That was Juan Samuel, who also homered to give the Phillies a 1-0 lead. Ken Oberkfell got a base hit up the middle for Atlanta to tie the game at 2-2 with Dale Murphy crossing the plate. With a runner at second, after Cerrone's double, Hubbard's sacrifice bunt. They went to third late because of Thompson's speed. And after Washington was walked to load the bases, Rafael Ramirez singled into right center field, and the Braves had won the ball game 3-2. It will be Steve Bedrosian on the mound for the Atlanta team tomorrow night. Bedrosian will work against Shane Raleigh for the Phillies, and we'll have it for you at 7.35 Eastern Time, right here on WTBS. For John Sterling, for Ernie Johnson and Pete Van Weeren, and our TBS crew, Skip Carey, thanking you for being with us. Have a good evening. So long, everybody. WTBS has presented America's team, the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta Braves baseball has been brought to you by Bud Light, the less filling light beer with the first name in taste. By Delta Airlines, serving more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. And by Toyota's exciting line of cars and trucks for 1985. Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. By Canon quality cameras and photographic equipment. So advanced, Canon is the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. By CNN, the world's most important network. And by Headline News, around the world every 30 minutes. Atlanta Braves Baseball is a production of TBS Sports.